So who are you, sir? H H K Edgerton. And who are you portraying? I'm just here representing those folks who look like me, <laughs> who earn a place of honor and dignity under this flag. Hmm. Uh, can you say something about about uh, the black troops uh, that were under the Confederacy? I can say that they all earned a great deal of honor. Mm. Levi Carnine, Hope Collier, Reverend Mike Lee, Horace King. Horace King built the spiral staircases in, in, in the capital at Montgomery. Mm -hmm. He also built bridges for General Lee. I don't mean raggedy, rinkety bridges that carried horses and cannons. Uh, certainly can't forget Hope Collier, who was probably uh, one of the greatest black Confederate soldiers. As a matter of fact, speaking of Hope Collier, after the war was over, Theodore Roosevelt came to the South on a on a hunting expedition and was looking for bear and couldn't find one and Hope went out and caught one that night and tied it to a tree and told the president to shoot it. And he said, I can't shoot it. And when people found out about it, they started sending them teddy bears from all over the country. Can't, miss, can't forget about Levi Carnine who walked uh, thousands, uh, over a thousand miles to taking letters and money from the from, from the, the Confederate soldiers back home through Louisiana. Uh, you can't forget about Napoleon Nelson who rode with General Nathan Bedford Barris out of 42 black men who rode with General Nathan Bedford Barris. You know, General Nathan Barris had 29 horses set up under him and he said he never worried about it because those black men had his back. Uh, you know, on and on and on you go. When I walked in Texas, people I'm doing 20 miles a day, six days a week, 1,600 miles. Go to my website, southernheritage411.com. Uh, the black folks came out from all over the place mm. talking about their ancestors and, and all the great deeds that they did. You know, mm. they, bringing their body, uh, masters' bodies back home yeah. to enemy lines. You could get killed for that with a, with a Confederate mm. soldier uniform on being a black person. Uh, Reverend Mac Lee, mm. General Lee's uh, body servant, started the first credit union in America. Helping those black folks mm. built more churches in, in, in Billy Graham then. Mm. Uh, so, so you can't forget about Rev. Mike Lee. On and on and on it goes. But in 1865, when these folks came here, uh, my northern friends, and, and built a public school system, they began to tell the young white babies that their parents were rebels and traitors. Mm. And, 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 and the black folks had no part at all in it. They were yeah. just slaves and beat every day. Mm. So, so black folks learned to place a part of dignity. Right, those trained cadre of black folks in plantations all across the South Atlantic of America who made all the implements of war mm. and provided all the food stuff for General Lee's beleaguered army. You can't forget about them. Mm. You can't forget about all those women and, and making uniforms and gunpowder. You can't forget about them. Uh, you, you certainly can't forget about those those Africans uh, who stayed at home and protected those plantations mm. uh, the best they could. Uh, against an army that had a total war policy, like these folks over here behind me, mm -hmm. that that had a had a, a, a green light to do anything they could to mm. take the theater of war to the to the defenseless mm. men, women, and children in the South, raping, robbing, stealing, killing, and burning, loot like they did. Mm. And then they tell me today that it was a war of attrition, you mm. know, to justify those kinds of atrocities. Yes, I am standing here mm. with, with my with the Christian cross of St. Andrews, the Confederate battle flag, very proudly, young man, mm. because I believe had the South won the war, black folks would be some of the most honored people in, in this country. Look at us now, at the bottom skin of mm. American life, in the cesspool of it, because my Yankee friends know mm. what, the, what the black folks did in support of, of President Davis in that war. So here we go. Now, what, uh, what about your feeling on the Appomattox surrender? I didn't come here to surrender. Mm. And, I, and I feel bad about the surrender. Let me tell you something. Mm. I told a young black lady this morning, she asked me that very same question. And I told her, I came here to ask General Robert E. Lee mm. not to sign the paper mm. at this reenactment. Mm. I am David Chaucer, Honorable David Chaucer out of uh, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Uh, reenacts General Robert E. Lee. He's one of the one of the three that I do know. Mm. I am his chief color bearer. Mm -hmm. I sent him a petition to serve by his side. Should he be the Robert E. Lee that they chose here? He told mm. me he was sick, and the gentleman by the name of Al Stone would do it. Al Stone saw his reply to me because he said, "You didn't have to ask me. Mm. Had I been there, you would have been by my side. Mm. And if he had been here." Mm -hmm. I would have called out to him, General mm. Sir, H.K. Edison, Chief Color Bearer.
color sergeant for you. Mm -hmm. I have a request. And I would have walked right up there with the whole world watching. Mm -hmm. And I would have begged of him, General Lee, remember your words. Mm -hmm. If I had known what you Yankees had in store for my South Man, I would have never mm -hmm. surrendered. And I would have told him, sir, in the 21st century, you know. Mm -hmm. If I would have had to tell him that I was sent back in time mm -hmm. to tell him to put that pen down on April 9th, 2015, I believe in my heart that the Honorable David Salkis would have said, troops withdraw. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what it had been like around here? <laughs> that happened. It should have happened. That's why I came to this town. All right. However, mm -hmm. being that nobody had the chance to have mm -hmm. me up on that stage, mm -hmm. you know, you <laughs> came here, come to fight with them, that lady right there. Yeah. And he, uh, God bless that lady for being so brave. We have been camped here since, since the summer. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see what's behind me, mm -hmm. U.S. Color Force. Yeah. Right here in the heart of the black community, here I am with mm. the Confederate battle flag, uh, the, the, the Army of Northern Virginia, the third national Irish flag, and the Virginia State flag, mm -hmm. on her property in a historical black facility. Yeah. A black museum. Mm. I love that lady mm. because she under, she has enough vision to, uh, vision to understand There's two sides to every mm -hmm. story. You can't just keep telling folks who look like me and carry this flag, and white folks who look like you and carry this mm. flag, that, that, that we have to accept the NAACP resolution that said mm. that this is an evil, odious white on the universe, and that black folks had no part in its inception or its defense. That's a lie. Mm. This flag belongs as much to me as any white man in the whole country, or in the whole Southland of America. Hi, how you, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Now, to have the courage to allow us to come here, because I'm willing to talk to anybody who won't talk mm. to me about it, but to plant the Southern Cross mm -hmm. on her grounds, knowing how politically mm. incorrect it might be for mm. some folks. Mm -hmm. See, this lady had enough vision to do that. Now, mm. here's the second part about that. This state, this county, and this city owe her a great deal of gratitude. Right mm. over there, that sign says, Civil Rights and Education Heritage mm -hmm. By having us here, the other side of the story can be told. Mm. Folks driving by, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. Mm. So for her to do that, God bless this lady. Mm. I'd fight, I'd fight a butane burning dragon for her. Mm. And I hope that this county and this city, all the funds they took in and take in over here in Appomattox, they ought to have enough vision to see the seed that this lady has planted mm -hmm. and the need for the seed that she planted. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King said he had a dream that one day that the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners would sit down at the table of brotherhood. Mm -hmm. If you go past this flag, just as well slide that chair up under the table mm -hmm. there will be no brotherhood. Far too many people, red, yellow, black, and white, mm -hmm. lost their lives in defense mm -hmm. of this flag. I quote Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. All right.